Alright you guys, I'm back with a whole new list of dishes from MasterChef that's gonna make you want to skip dinner. But you've gotta give it to this guy. He walked into his own execution with all the misplaced confidence in the world. Have you ever been to France? No. French cookbooks? French no. restaurants? No. Okay. Yeah, this guy didn't know the first thing about French cuisine. And here he was, going in fully blind, yet somehow filled with confidence. So when time finally ran out and he had to present his dish, you can say he didn't exactly win any medal. I have a filet crusted peppercorn, a creamy rosemary garlic mashed with a bernet sauce. Not only did it look boring, but it also had some major problems. And Joe didn't even taste it before he started to pick at him. You normally put bernet sauce on your steak? French. Not many French people I know, but... Oh boy. Dude should've looked in a cookbook first, I think. And the fact that he didn't hit the books before going in blind was going to be his undoing. Then Joe pointed out the texture of the mashed potatoes, which were far from appetizing. Does the consistency look nice? You like the thickness of it? I would have liked them a little thicker. Thicker than that? So the problem was that they were thick and gooey. But Mark over here would have liked them even thicker. Now, imagine if he did make them thicker like he'd initially planned to. Joe probably would have kicked him to the curb right then and there. But back in our version of events, Joe wasn't impressed. But when he finally got around to tasting it, he was beyond shocked. Raw? Liquidy. It's raw flour in here. What? Joe was visibly taken aback. And it wasn't made with traditional ingredients alone. Mark snuck in an unwelcome and decidedly not traditional addition. Raw flour. Apparently, the mashed potatoes were too runny, and Mark thought that adding raw flour would help. But clearly, it didn't. I mean, come on. Being on a cooking show and not knowing how to whip up mashed potatoes of all things? One of the simplest dishes? What is this, amateur hour? Now, I've been going on and on about Joe's reaction. So, how do you think Ramsay took it? Well... There are several things that you can never do in cooking, and adding flour to a liquid mashed potato is one of them. In the end, Mark couldn't help but acknowledge his mistake. He knew that he had screwed up big time, and there was no way he could save himself. And just like he expected, thanks to this one mistake, he was sent home packing. But hey, at least when it comes to serving up some pretty messed up dishes, Mark is in good company. If you ask me, I think Jennifer's dish from season two, episode seven, was an even bigger disaster. What happened is, during the mystery box challenge, the contestants were tasked with preparing lamb. Easy peasy, right? But that's when Jennifer ended up making a hasty decision. Originally, I was just gonna stick with my lollipop chop. Maybe I should try to throw it on there. I figured that I would have enough time. She decided to use a whole bunch of the lamb, thinking she had enough time to cook it through. But boy, was she so wrong. And finally, when the time was up, Jennifer realized what a huge mistake she had made. The judges were quick to notice it too. Ramsey even singled her out in front of everyone, saying her dish stood out for all the wrong reasons. Meanwhile, Joe wasted no time in laying it all out in the open too. This lamb is raw, is completely raw. Not exactly a shocker though, right? I could see that one coming from like a mile away. I mean, what was she even thinking? Throwing a lamb chop into a hot pan and expecting it to be done in 10 minutes? I think we're going beyond an amateur mistake here. Safe to say, the lamb was a complete disaster. And when Joe cut into it, this is what he saw. It would be dangerous to serve a piece of lamb like this to a judge. This is raw. The lamb was so raw that you couldn't even tell if someone tried to cook it unless they looked at the pathetic sear on the outside. What made it even worse was the fact that if it were served in a restaurant and someone actually ate it, it'd be a one-way ticket to the ER. This time, Joe's anger was definitely justified. This time. Anyway, he was so pissed that what he said next was totally expected. If it were for me, this is not an elimination round, I would send you home now. Damn, that's gotta sting. Jennifer was left in tears and sure as hell regretted her choice for a long time to come, I bet. But hey, 
at least one thing's for sure, she won't repeat the same mistake ever again. Well, raw lamb chops are definitely not something you'd want on your plate, but this next one, trust me, you wouldn't want to be anywhere near it. So let's head to episode 10 of season three, where David found himself in the elimination round. And the rules were pretty simple. The contestants had to create one dish using a pizza stone. But it seemed like David struggled quite a bit. Eh, maybe that's underselling it. I roasted the potatoes in the pizza stone, I did the bacon in the pizza stone, and I did the uh, lobster on the pizza stone as well. Anyone hungry? No? That's what I thought. Now, Graham wasn't too happy about the dish either. This looks really bad. Bad would be an understatement, and I think Graham realized that too, because what he said next was a burn for the ages. It almost looks like some kind of soup, but then you got like this big old long piece of bacon that looked like it just fell in it from someone's breakfast plate. You know what? That might sound brutal, but it was some much needed criticism. The whole dish looked like a mess, and that single strip of bacon wasn't helping at all. It seemed out of place, if anything. Even David himself knew he messed up, but what? What could he possibly do at that point? To make things worse, the taste wasn't any good either, and his reaction to it must have stunk. Come on, Dave. You know, that look of disappointment hurts way more than any of the anger I've talked about so far. But Joe came forward to taste next, and I'm sure you can guess that he was gonna bring enough anger for both him and Graham to share. And so it didn't really come as a shock that these were his first words as soon as he attempted to taste the dish. I'm supposed to eat this? Really? And when he finally did taste it, you won't believe what he had to say. Watching you cook this was just a letdown. Misled you a bit there, huh? No anger, just seething disappointment. He couldn't believe how a guy who was one of the top contenders that season could ever bring a dish like that to the table. And so, he pulled out his signature move. This is the most important dish of your life, guys. You see this? This is That was a bit much in my opinion, but that's Joe for you. Him and his trash can have a special sort of relationship. And of course, it's his signature move, so it wasn't the only time he disposed of food like that. In season three, episode four's elimination test, Helen presented her dish and what she put on the table didn't look edible from any angle. That is saffron risotto topped with scallops that are crusted in a red peppercorn smoked sea salt wrapped in bird effort. To Ramsey, there's no way even the slightest error would go unnoticed. And this dish had a ton of them. Ramsey could tell what was wrong with it immediately. The center of that bright brain of rice, what does that mean? That it's perhaps undercooked? Yeah, it was definitely not a matter of perhaps. The rice was undercooked. But that wasn't the only thing wrong with the dish. It was just the beginning. What the f is that? A basket. Oh, God, I could scream. A burdock basket. Did she mistake MasterChef for like an arts and craft show or something? Ramsey nearly wanted to pull his hair out. That's how wrong the dish was. And the scallops stuffed inside were completely raw to top it all off. I feel like at this point, Helen wanted to get eliminated because there's no way someone who wanted to stay on the show could possibly put out raw food so brazenly like that. I mean, first it was raw rice, then it was raw scallops. Man, was there anything on that plate that was actually cooked? And Ramsey, he was beyond disappointed, and what he said next was totally justified. I'm looking at that, and I'm looking at the MasterChef trophy, I'm thinking, nah. That was Ramsey, but like I alluded to earlier, it's time for Joe. Well, let's just say if I were Helen, I'd start crying on the spot. Scallop basket, go in the garbage basket. Brutal doesn't even begin to cover it. Yeah, MasterChef isn't just a game, and treating it like one isn't an option if you want to win. Chalk that up as a rare moment where his and my opinions are aligned. You can't just bring whatever to the table and call it a dish so long as it's got some fancy avant-garde element. Especially if that frou-frou nonsense is raw. Well, presenting a dish like that was a bold move. 
But up next, I've got a contestant who sure knew how to give tough competition. So for this one, we're heading to season four, where the stakes were higher than ever, but that didn't stop the contestants from whipping up some pretty questionable dishes. And who could be a better example than Howard Simpson? Considered one of the weakest, if not the worst, Howard sure knew how to piss off all the judges with his dishes. But one dish stood out in particular. During the elimination round in episode four, he presented a dish so appalling that Ramsey was genuinely concerned just by looking at it. Did you disappear into the library for half an hour? No, I did not. What is it, please? I mean, I'd ask the same question, cause what was that? Apparently, it was poached langoustine, and it looked far from appetizing. Citrus salad with a champion vinaigrette, diced mangoes, sliced grapefruit, and just put the langoustine on top. The dish looked like he just tossed in some raw veggies he saw lying around in the kitchen. Or better yet, picked up from the leaf litter outside. Ramsey was obviously pissed, and what did he do? Well, check it out yourselves. Well, I am blown away. I'm shocked. In fact, I'm not even gonna eat it. Honestly, Ramsey's reaction was pretty expected. This guy had 60 minutes to whip up an actual dish, and he decided to throw some raw veggies on a plate, give it a fancy name, and call it a dish? What a joke! And his excuse for his lack of creativity was that he was concentrating more on the vinaigrette. But here's the thing, the judges couldn't even see the vinaigrette he was focusing so hard on. Not just Ramsey, but the rest of the judges too. But wait, what Ramsey said next was so brutal that it had to have been playing on repeat in his head for weeks afterwards. You know I'm not a rabbit, and yet you serve me food that's fit for a rabbit hutch, and you're expecting me to get blown away. I mean, he's not wrong. This dish did look more like rabbit food than human food, so much so that if someone said it was for a rabbit, I'd believe them. And guess what? Ramsey felt so disrespected that he didn't even taste the dish. And well, next it was time for Joe to give his much valued criticism. And you best believe he gave a harder blow than Ramsey. I went out and told everyone how good you were. You're in a landslide. This is a waste of our time. Oh boy. And nope, he didn't stop there. At this point, if it were up to me, I'd throw you out. I put my ass on the line for you, and that's the you give me. Well, this dish ideally should have sent him packing. I mean, what he presented wasn't just a low effort dish with a fancy name, but a disrespect to the culinary art in general. And he was wasting both his fellow contestants' time and the judges. His own too, if you feel charitable enough. But he somehow managed to dodge the bullet that night, but he wasn't the only contestant who didn't deserve the platform. Episode 10, season four, was a hell of a ride for Beamy. And why do I say that? Because during the lemon meringue pie pressure test, he messed up his pie in spectacular fashion. So it was finally his turn to get his pie judged, and Ramsey's first impression was far from impressed. Oh, Beamy. Wow. He sure was wowed, but not in a good way. And when he cut into the pie, good God, things took a turn for the worse. Ramsey couldn't even cut into the pie properly. And you wanna know why? Well, I mean. Turns out the whole pie was mushy and runny on the inside. No wonder he couldn't get a clean cut. It was so bad that Ramsey literally had to bring in two cocktail glasses. And it should be obvious why he needed them, right? That's right, he legit had to pour the pie filling into a glass to actually have a way to put it into his mouth. As for the taste, after all the effort Ramsey put in trying to get a drop of it, well, his reaction should clear things up for ya. Me. Oh, he regretted putting that into his mouth for sure. The taste was absolutely appalling. And you could see that very well from the look on his face. Apparently, he made the mistake of adding cream of tartar to thicken his curd instead of cornstarch. Like, I can see the logic there, but still. Ramsey was beyond shocked, and not to mention pissed. And his response to Beamy's carelessness was one for the books. What are you trying to do, kill us? 
Ramsey then told him that there was only supposed to be a teaspoon in the recipe. But when he asked Beamy how much he added, he straight up said he added 10 <laughs> tablespoons. That's 30 times as much as he needed for reference, claiming that he messed up and grabbed the wrong ingredient. And, well, I doubt anyone was surprised he got the boot. I guess you could say that you wouldn't want to be him right now. Anyway, Beamy wasn't the only one to mess up a meringue. My last pick is no stranger to messing up his dishes, but this time, he messed up so spectacularly that it actually bends the mind. But before that, take a moment to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already. You could also become a member of the channel by hitting the tab right here. So let's keep the support pouring in, you guys. You have no idea how much I appreciate it. And now, circling back, the home cook I'm talking about is Lynn, aka Mr. Finesse, as Ramsey would like to call him. In episode 13 of season 4, during the $5 Walmart bake sale elimination challenge, Lynn had presented his dish, and by the looks of it, it was probably about as good as those frozen meals Ramsey's selling there. You serious? Yeah, that's an immediate no from me. Ramsey thought the dish looked so disgusting that he even called the rest of the judges over to take a look at it. And trust me, they weren't huge fans either. And Joe, he made his displeasure known loud and clear. Did you drive over it? What is it? Man, leave it to Joe to come up with the craziest analogies. But hey, it did look like someone had just run over it. I'd say it looked worse even. Apparently, Lynn had prepared a baked meringue with banana puree, and I'm not gonna lie, there's no way I could tell that just by looking at it. If you've noticed, most times Ramsey chooses to keep his cool on MasterChef, but this dish? It brought out the Hell's Kitchen in him. He straight up destroyed Lynn by comparing it to cow shit. Now, I don't know about you, but if I were Lynn, I'd want to dig a hole and bury myself right then and there. And when Ramsey went for a bite, he had a few things to say. And trust me, none of them were good. It's like eating a wall insulator with some strawberry or banana that your granddad left under his bed before he passed. I mean, if you thought Joe was the boss of insults, then Ramsey's the CEO. But guess what? The harsh feedback was totally justified. The dish was completely rancid. Only someone who had lost their sense of taste and smell could ever try it and come out the other end unscathed. And Ramsey was far from done yet, too. That is the worst dish I have seen on a plate in four years of MasterChef. Yeesh. But things didn't get any better when Joe came to taste the dish. But this time around, he turned out to be smarter than Ramsey. He wanted to spare himself the pain of tasting it, and so instead, he pulled his signature move. Might be a memento for you to take home. Well, 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 that's how Lynn's last day on the show came to an end. But when this next contestant tried to bring her military training into the kitchen, it completely backfired. Pun absolutely intended. This is how I want the brochettes, people! I'm nervous about Lynn's leadership. She has a military background. Talk about a kitchen throwdown. But is Lynn gonna be feeling the heat? How about everybody else? She was pushing everyone to hustle, and everyone was pretty much giving it their all. But could they handle Lynn on top of the challenge at hand? Let's see what happened next. Okay, Jen, move it. I'm going as fast as I possibly can. Oh, boy. Now, Lynn was on top of Jen, trying to get her to use the mandolin. But using a mandolin isn't always super simple, and it's pretty dangerous. And let me tell ya, Jen was putting in some serious effort regardless. But it didn't quite go to plan. All I hear in my head right now, use the mandolin, use the mandolin! Everybody by now should know how to use a mandolin. I know. Hey, I don't want any lip service. Man, with how Lynn was barking orders like a drill sergeant, Jen may as well have been in the trenches. But Lynn just couldn't be satisfied. Poor Jen was feeling like the whole kitchen had their eyes on her, and she was ready to throw in the towel. Or, well, apron. The tension was absolutely wild. But just then, Jen was about to turn up the heat, but... Do you want to do it yourself? Pardon me? Yeesh. That doesn't look good. Jen and Lynn may as well have been at each other's throats, and the judges were picking up on it too. Now, here's the big question. 
Were the judges gonna side with Jen or stick to Lynn's madness and hope there was a method to it? Well, only one way to find out. Honestly, I don't think it's a big deal. If she didn't know how to use it, she can cut it any way she wants. As long as you get it cut, that's fine. Did you see that? They dropped those truth bombs real quick. Lynn was a mess and she just couldn't get it going. But let's just say she wasn't taking that advice with a pinch of salt. Her flavors were definitely off. But before we could dwell on that for even a second, a massive twist was around the corner. The parsley has to be chopped. It doesn't go in the mirror pool. Ah, I don't think any of you saw that coming, huh? I know I certainly didn't. That's got a stint. But what this next contestant did was even worse. Oh boy, Cutter was a walking disaster. Picture this. A mix of shameless, annoying, and downright rude attitudes. Safe to say, not the kind of person you'd want to work with. Sure, the guy had the determination, but his ego was absolutely massive. And the dude wasn't checking it at the door. Let's not forget his cringe-worthy streak of flops, either. Dude couldn't even have a single somewhat normal challenge. Get ready, because this is a train wreck to end all train wrecks. Uh, I have to disagree with Chef Ramsay. I think it actually tastes pretty good to me. Cutter's cake, they were saying, had way, way too much sugar. While Dan's cake was just like the Sahara Desert, completely dry. Gotta say... Hard to tell which one was worse. But here's the kicker. Cutter, with all the bravado in the world, went head to head with the judges, pretty much saying he didn't give a damn about their feedback. The guy also had the audacity to essentially insult Joe's palate. Uh-oh, not a good idea. And then, get this, he was going on and on about poor Leslie. Can you believe it? And folks, just you wait for the bomb he was about to drop. If it makes you even half as angry as it made me, well, you're gonna be pissed as hell. Dude. Look, I'm on the edge of going home. I'll be honest with you, I'm on the edge of going home. Baking sucks for me. Whoa, hold up a sec. Did I hear that right? So when they grilled him about his defensiveness, he insisted he was just putting his heart and soul into his dishes. But guess what? Come judgment time, Ramsey called Cutter out. He didn't mince words and pointed out how the dude didn't have a respectful bone in his body. And surprise, surprise, Cutter was back in the hot seat again. I mean, can you blame him? This guy had bottom two written all over him. Yeah. If you think Gordon's pal is terrible, you're allowed to think That's not that. not what I said at all. Don't put words in my mouth. Man, dude just doesn't know when to quit. It's because of chefs like him that team challenges seem more like teen drama. If you ask me, I think the dude had a unique talent. He'd just squabble over the smallest amount of critique, turn the judges sour, and spread his negativity all over the place. And oh boy, the shouting matches. Like, I have no idea how Cutter got on the show to begin with. The dude was scraping the bottom of the barrel from the very start, both with his food and his attitude. But hold up. Here comes a plot twist. After nearly getting the boot a bunch of times, he finally started to shape up, slowly putting his ego on the back burner and, hey, actually listening to feedback sometimes. And guess what? It paid off. He finally whipped up some killer dishes later on. However, that doesn't mean he got any love from the viewers. They pretty much hated him. Like, it's no secret that a ton of fans haven't forgiven him for his, well, it tasted good, so it must be good comment. Nor should they. And people continue to joke about his artisan pizza as well. But you know what? I totally agree with this guy over here who thinks that Cutter's unwillingness to learn from his mistakes or even admit that he makes them in the first place made him so disliked by the judges and the people at home. But do you know what happens when two contestants decide to lock horns with each other instead of, you know, actually participating in the competition? Well, definitely not anything good. Okay, so let me introduce you to David, the season's golden boy. This guy was top shelf stuff, straight out of fancy schmancy fine dining. It's Master Chef, bro, calm down. But he had the skills to run away with the whole thing. And the dude loved a good solo challenge. But was he a team player? Shockingly, yeah. And what's more, he had a heart full of passion too. I mean, this dude actually signed up for the competition for his kid's sake. I can respect that. But hey, not all that glitters is gold. And David's attitude, 
definitely wasn't. The dude had a hell of a temper and a perpetual aggressiveness that followed him around like a bad smell. Not to mention that his hostility could put a bulls to shame, and his explosions would make aluminum foil in a microwave blush. Yeah, dude's not looking so golden now, huh? Like seriously, what do you have to say about this? I don't know why you wouldn't give it to Brandon. I know David gets easily frustrated. Man, he really dropped the ball on that, didn't he? But David flipped the script and showed Sean his place. But did he step up to the plate? So here's the thing. This dude was cocky to boot. He wasn't all aggro, hostility, and explosive temper. Oh no, he had an ego the size of Jupiter too. That is to say, he had a massive problem with people he saw as his lessers. And to make things worse, he had such a short fuse. Yep, the dude wouldn't think twice before having a huge tantrum on national television. He was even caught pouting and giving his best toddler impression right to the cameras. I honestly don't even know how he has the energy to keep this sort of act up. You're an idiot. <laughs> idiot. <gasps> Personal attacks, David? You're gonna get mad like that? Clearly, this guy was beyond pissed, and nope, he wasn't planning on hitting the brakes. You can't forget his most famous move, though. Trying to bounce from the whole competition when the top five were on deck. Talk about drama. Dude was pouring gasoline on every fire that he possibly could. And that aggression, again, it was totally off the charts. The dude just could not calm down for half a second. Home cooks like Brandy, Tenoria, Kate, and Dan did their best to keep him at arm's length. Or even further if they could manage it. But here's the thing. He and Sean were actually cooking up a friendship at first. But that blew up in both of their faces super quickly. Now, Sean had his hands full, testing David. But as you know, David had a mouthful to dish out himself. And this idiot doesn't even get a protein, and then I get this and <laughs> up. No, it's a You won't believe it, but Ramsey was actually trying to throw in a little bit of goodwill in the face of it all. It's rare you see the guy on the back foot. Meanwhile, David was just trying to be all friendly and whatnot. But guess what? His comebacks were just so totally far off. Seriously, check this out. For every ounce of support Ramsey tried to give, David had a pound of ice cold attitude to retaliate with. Like, oh, smoke trout and some Asian stuff. <laughs> just, just, it's a joke. Either way, I can tell you Ramsey came so close to blowing up right in his face. The dude beyond deserved it, but I've got respect for Ramsey to actually be able to hold back in the face of it all. But if you thought that was bad, then wait till you see what happened with this next set of contestants. So picture this. This squad had been through hell at Sandy Shores, and there was chaos left, right, and center. Now they were all back at the MasterChef kitchen, facing the pressure test of their lives. I doubt these guys had faced a make it or break it moment of this scale in their lives, let alone the competition. And I'd bet good money they haven't seen one like it since. So let's take a look at the madness for ourselves, shall we? Between us, and it would not be healthy for any team. I think we learned a lot from yesterday. Meet Chrissy Biasiello probably the biggest drama queen in MasterChef history. Starting off misunderstood, she just kept doubling down on her rudeness. But hey, eventually she managed to kick it up a notch by pissing everyone off and putting her fiery temper on full display. You see, she wasn't an average, ordinary bully. Oh no, she was a bully the likes of which I've never seen before. And to make things worse, she was never one to own up to her own blunders in the kitchen. And oh, the kind of grudges she held on to. She took offense with the smallest of things and held on to them in a vice grip. And get this, not even the judges were safe from the kind of fury that she was dishing out on a daily basis. She was throwing out threats left, right, and center and boasted so openly about how much of a bully she was in high school. Sounds to me like she peaked in high school. Well, anyway, take a look at this. I said almost I burnt. Savannah, hey, 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 All hey, right, hey, hey. shut the up. There's no stopping her, that's for sure. But you know who else that reminds me of? Brie Kozier. And well, she wasn't afraid to take Chrissy on. Brie was usually chill, keeping her head down and not making much of a ruckus. But Brie wasn't meek. When she's had enough, watch out. Well, Brie decided to give Chrissy a taste of her own medicine. 
And guess what? Chrissy couldn't handle the heat and flipped out. You bitching about everything. And here yeah. you are coming in like, oh, you guys, it was such a bad team. Oh boy, like I said, Chrissy just wouldn't quit. But hold it right there, because she still had another nasty surprise up her sleeve. Up, really? I'm what are you gonna do? You to Good. I That's hope you. You I'm can't sit here and talk to God like an adult. All you ever want to do is hit everyone in the you got face. One minute. God, that's hard to watch. But I've got to respect Brie for standing up to Chrissy when no one else could. And viewers online had a lot to say about Chrissy, too. Nothing good. One commentator couldn't believe why she was kept on the show for so long. From rolling her eyes to her snarky comments, the only thing she did well was be mean to her fellow contestants. Not exactly what they signed up for. It's crazy how Joe said it was the toughest decision of his life. I don't know, bro. Seems like a pretty easy choice to me. Viewers can't help but wonder why he had such a hard time letting her go. Meanwhile, another user mentioned how she has an issue with vegetarians in particular. Whoa, that never crossed my mind until I read this. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. And you know what? I'm not done with her yet. Because Chrissy thought she was smarter than the judges. And boy, does that make me cringe. Her not-so-top-tier culinary chops were plain for everybody to see. Well, except for her, leaving secondhand embarrassment in her wake. Like, just look at how casually she talks back to Joe. Way below your capability. You're playing it safe and you could be in danger. I'm, you know, I'm not I, I playing just... it safe. Oh boy, here we go again. And I thought we had enough of this with Cutter. Chrissy thought her dish was as good as gold. But we know how this story goes. It's a tale as old as time, and the judges knew it too. Don't take my word for it. See it for yourselves. I know my fish is cooked perfectly. I know my potatoes taste amazing. Thinking she's got more flavor than the masters. Yeah, this isn't gonna end well. Check this out. She had this wild notion in her head that her fried catfish was like a five-star dish, when honestly, it may as well have still been swimming around in the mud. Talk about delusional. She was convinced the judges were out to get her, even before they took a bite. But nah, I don't think it's a them problem. It's a you problem. So get this. She went back to her station and went on a huge rant about her catfish being the dish of the century. She was like, the judges won't get it, so let me just drag Joe down with me while I'm at it. But Joe saw that coming from a mile away. Safe to say, the man wasn't dishing out compliments. Now, say what you will about him, but at least he had the decorum to try and warn her she was on the wrong path. If you want to talk behind my back, have the balls to say it up here in front of me. But if you thought that everything we've covered so far was insane, oh boy, you're not ready for what's coming up next. This point, our team and having that pressure. But speaking of tempers, let's head over to this next example with our good old pal, Joe Bastianich, taking the spotlight. Trust me, Joe's got a taste for tough love and he's far from afraid of giving it. A fact that's made plain as day in this next clip. You gotta be kidding me, Slim. This is like a, a buffet gone bad. Get this, he didn't even bother tasting the food, but that's not even the half of it. Now, we know Joe. He's not exactly polite even at the best of times. Sometimes, when an outstanding dish comes up for judgment, he just calls it pretty good before sauntering off without another word. But when the bad dishes come out, so does his fury. The dude loves to throw dishes straight into the trash. Love, love, loves it. Now, I'm definitely not the biggest fan of his particular kind of antics, but hey, that's reality TV for ya. And don't forget, he also loves taking a sledgehammer to people's confidence. The dude bandies out huge gut punch insults almost as easily as breathing. Just like this moment right here. You need to be listening to what we're telling you about what we're producing because this is ridiculous. And here, he did both at the same time. Not exactly a nice move, huh? But hey, that's the way it goes in the MasterChef kitchen sometimes. But a ton of fans of the show are on the same page I am about his act. Like, this episode's audience wasn't exactly giving him a standing ovation for it. I mean, we all know how Ramsay hates people who waste food. And here we have Joe trashing every other plate he has the slightest problem with. You gotta wonder how Ramsey and Joe can manage to stay in the same room as each other. But hey, 
After a bit of a kitchen hiatus, the restaurateur was back with a softer side. Starting from season 9, he was like a whole different person. Encouraging, lending a helping hand, and dishing out some genuine warmth. But don't think he had gone completely soft. He still had a sprinkle of spice. Those critiques? Well, they were like a marinade, meant to tenderize the cooks and help them improve later on down the line. Anyway, this one is no less insane than the previous one, and trust me, it's only gonna get way more intense. Remember this quote? I think you're wrong. I don't think my dish was the worst one here. Esther's dish looked pretty shit. Think what you want. Well, that was Christian Collins. So, after Max got the boot, the guy's cockiness and arrogance went through the roof. We're talking full-blown ego explosions. He turned into a selfish show-off, a total me, myself, and I kind of guy. And his attitude? Horrible, sour, and just plain difficult to watch. He went all out with his rudeness, dishing out disrespect to everybody that he could. And what's more, oh, he was ready to toss his own teammates under the bus without a second thought. We were very disappointed. I think you're wrong. I don't think my dish is the worst dish here. Esther's dish looked pretty Think what you want. Whoa, did you catch that? Joe's comment hit real hard, and man, Max's face showed it all. But Christian wasn't about to sit around and take it. Far from it. Nope. Unlike a lot of the other folks I've talked about so far, Christian just flat out denied what the judges had to say. No beating around the bush. I don't agree with you. Well, we're trying to give you constructive criticism. By this time, Chef Ramsay had enough and decided to dish out some truth to Christian. Can't blame him, though. Christian's the kind of guy you wouldn't want anywhere near you, and Ramsay and his fellow judges had to face him down every other day. Unfortunately, your talent's not matching your arrogance. The kind of back talk Christian was throwing down, the judges didn't hesitate for a second to let him have it. His dish sucked, and they made sure he knew it. But hold it right there, because this next contestant whipped out an illegal ingredient midway through a cook. When you're a MasterChef contestant, you're expected to be held to a certain standard when it comes to your dishes. However, sometimes you just can't call these creations food. From Ramsay hitting his boiling point to Joe tossing food around like it's nobody's business, these dishes brought out the worst in the judges. Let's get started from this time from season one when the top three critics were in for an unexpected twist. I'm talking about season 11 when things took a turn for the worse for one particular home cook. While the judges were all excited to try some incredible dishes, Whitney boldly served a pan-seared sculpin with a little special ingredient. Wondering what it was? Well, check this out. Um, I actually used the tomatoes out of the can. Yep, canned tomatoes. A staple in my kitchen, maybe, but in the MasterChef kitchen? Come on, they got some beautiful fresh ones right over there. That little secret of hers left the judges stunned. You could almost see the blood drain from their faces. What's more, none of them were actually interested to even taste the dish anymore. And Whitney kind of got wind of it too. Thank you. But you have to agree. Whether it's out of ignorance or stupidity, Whitney made a bold move with those canned tomatoes. Despite Ramsay's disdain for canned food, she chose to go ahead with it anyway. However, nobody was anywhere near impressed. I mean, forget about the tomato part. Nothing about the dish felt right. The garlic is overpowering. I can't really taste the fish because there's so much garlic in my mouth. Surprisingly, Whitney was pretty happy with her dish. Going by the critics' feedback, I really wonder if she even tasted it before serving an entire pantry's worth of salt and garlic. However, when it was time to reveal the results, Ramsay gasped in disbelief. So, let's see where Whitney's efforts landed her on the scoreboard, shall we? A five out of 12. That person is. Yep, she barely managed to score five mm. points. That's it. In hindsight, I think the critics were kind to even award her a score. Had it been for Ramsey, he would have disqualified her right then and there. But Ramsey still had the chance to throw her through the ringer, and he didn't mince his words. He called her out on her choice and asked her a single question. Why tell the harshest critics anywhere in the world today 
that you're serving them canned tomatoes. But Whitney just stood there, stock still. It was hard to tell if she was taking it all in stride or if there was something deeper running inside her head. Did she forget she was on MasterChef? But I mean, of course she was upset. That much is fair. But despite Ramsey's crystal clear explanation, it's crazy how she still couldn't understand what had gone wrong. The results are not what I expected at all. I'm really upset. <laughs> However, that little emotional roller coaster was totally worth it, because this contestant actually made some fans overnight. Viewers pulled in their support and even lauded her for her humility and, of course, um, beauty. I mean, this isn't Miss International, but at least they're being respectful about it. And Whitney probably could feel this love right through the screens, and she didn't let those tears take control. She wiped them away, stood strong, and boldly declared she was going to fight back. Talk about a comeback story. But in the 14th episode of season 5, Chef Graham was backing Christian like never before. But soon, the situation took a turn for the worse. What happened is, despite all that support, the final result fell far short of expectations. As they inspected Christian's dish, they uncovered something that raised a ton of eyebrows. Trust me, this was truly shocking. I burnt one of my pot stickers. How could that have happened? Like, after all the time and effort, that's what you came up with. Come on. As the tension thickened, they kept digging into it with their words, not their forks. They become like rubber balls. They were pretty damn disappointed, if you ask me. I mean, no sauce, no garnish. Look at that. You, you guys are better than that. It's just sad. Turns out, Christian's dish lacked the most important component, the sauce. I mean, the sauce is boss for a reason. And then it was time for another twist. The judges seized the opportunity to teach him a vital lesson. They went into the nuances of steaming, revealing its hidden complexities. While it seems simple, doing it wrong can turn food rubbery in seconds. But the big moment finally came when Ramsey stepped in. Who seasoned the cabbage? I did. You better believe this guy never holds back with his criticism, least of all here. Season. Disgusting. Ramsey's disappointment was definitely valid. And just to twist the knife, there wasn't a speck of salt to speak of anywhere in the dish. It's always the seasoning. Big Willie pitched in to take the blame. However, that didn't stop Ramsey from calling the dish disgusting. And rightfully so. Ramsey questioned the seriousness and commitment of Willie and Christian to the competition. But what he said next was what really got me. Take a look. You both don't deserve to be in this competition. Can you believe that he actually suggested that none of them deserve to be on the show solely based on this one dish? But yeah, that was the end for Big Willie, at the very least. Your journey ends tonight in the MasterChef kitchen. Please say goodnight to Christian. But... Here comes another contestant, whose dish was even worse than the one that got Willie eliminated. Slim, who took part in season one, had put a lot at stake just to come on the show. She had given up on her graduation from Loyola and put all her eggs in the MasterChef basket. The time came for her to present her dish, and things didn't exactly go as planned. So when Ramsay inspected Slim's dish, you won't believe what happened. Put them on a stick. You've got to at least cut the fat off. How could she not trim the fat? That's like the most basic step. But that wasn't close to being all. There's a lot of ginger in the sauce, right? Yes, sir. Ramsey saw the truckload of ginger in the sauce from miles away. And boy, did he let her know about it. But he still wasn't done. If we were on a date and you cooked that dish for me, I'd go to the bathroom and you'd never see me again. Yeah, I bet he would. And then, the moment we've all been waiting for or dreading, Joe came on the scene. And calling him unhappy would be the understatement of the century. This is like a, a buffet gone bad. Go back to your station. I'm not tasting this crap. You guys have to, at this point in the competition, you need to be listening to what we're telling you about what we're producing because this is ridiculous. That was brutal. 
to see all your efforts just tossed into the trash like it's nothing? Heartbreaking. But hey, you know how much Joe loves doing that, but I haven't even gotten to what Joe had to say yet. A buffet gone bad. My taste is crap. This is ridiculous. Can you imagine the embarrassment? But that's not all, since he dialed it up to 11 by talking about how Salim can't be wasting their time like this. And trust me, the entire room was dead quiet with the thickest tension you'll ever see, feel, or hear. Or, well, not hear. The episode left everybody hanging, pondering the aftermath of all this and how it would affect Slim. Thing is, she was still working on making her mark with the judges and the viewers, which I don't think was going quite well for her. But the next one on my list gives her a run for her money for sure. In season nine, episode 11, Mark's arrogance took center stage. I've made it better over this way. It's faster, a double boiler takes too long. You have plenty of time. Do you want to make it right? Or do you want I to gotta make, it, make it right this way. This is the way my father taught me and I'll continue to do it forever. The astronomical doesn't even describe the half of it with how he dismissed Aaron's advice on making Bernay sauce correctly. Wrong move, buddy. And then he went on to defend his way, insisting it was faster and better. Even Joe's attempt to explain the importance of tried and true technique fell on deaf ears. Fast forward to the time when Ramsey finally intervened. And Ramsey, you see, had a lot to say. Making a Bernays sauce is difficult. And the reason why we put over double boilers is we cook the eggs into a sabillon, which then takes on the clarified butter. What he said next really drove his point home. He pointed out Mark's undercooked egg yolks and made it clear how disappointed he was. The pressure in the room had skyrocketed. And then it's gonna be just a very simple mint buttercream for the topping. Make it happen. Thank you. As the pressure test kicked in, Mark's attitude proved to be a persistent thorn in his own side. He tossed in strawberries at the last minute, turning things into a watery disaster. That's like chemistry 101. Come on, Ash John. Let's go. I don't have all my cupcakes in the box. Wow. But wait, there's more. Struggling to manage time, Mark fumbled and failed to get all the cupcakes into the box. And boy, was Ramsey not pleased. <laughs> Your boy, right? To make matters worse, he thought laughing it off was gonna fix it. But even with all that tension and Ramsey's disappointment and criticism, Mark stood his ground arguing that his opinions were being mistaken for arrogance. Ramsey, however, didn't back down. He emphasized that Mark was completely in the wrong. Yeah, Mark's departure was inevitable. However, I think season four, episode eight, has got even this moment beat. The red team was caught serving raw chicken. Who was responsible, you ask? It was none other than Luca. But hark, doth that be the sound of Ramsey's fury on the horizon? It is. He was furious, and those raw burgers weren't going anywhere near the tables. Joe wasn't too pleased either. What? It's raw. Let me go show work. the kitchen. Let me come back. Chef, these burgers oh no, are completely raw. I mean, raw again. But the red team was back again with raw burgers. It looks like Luca had some explaining to do. Kathy wasn't happy either. He knew what he was doing, so then if you know what you're doing, the burger should be medium rare, and you should know how to cook it. She believed he had it under control, but those medium rare mishaps were piling up. But amidst the chaos, she got her game face on. With her priorities straight, she left the burger drama behind and put her eyes on the prize. Meanwhile, Ramsey told the contestants to take their aprons off. He also told them to get ready to whip up the best 12 burgers of their lives. And by the way, who were these VIPs? Are you? Welcome. Hey, sir. It's all the other contestants. Nice to see you guys. The former contestants? Talk about a plot twist. But Luca had a strategy up his sleeve. But would he be able to execute it and snag the win? Well, soon enough, the customers were chowing down and the VIPs were casting their votes. But guess what? Yeah, the blue team snatched the win, even without serving all their burgers. That alone should tell you how bad it was for Luca and friends on the red team. 
but you have to see what happened in this next mystery box challenge from season two to believe it. There was this one dish that went completely off track, lacking meat or protein of any kind, and to top it off, it was just weird as hell. Any guesses whose dish it was? Yep, it was Christian's brainchild. And let me tell you, his expression was worth a thousand words. The perfect combination of both shock and disbelief. When Joe dropped the bomb that the judges were disappointed with the subpar performance, Christian pushed back with a shocking statement. It's par, we were very disappointed. I think you're wrong. I don't think my dish is the worst dish here. But wait, there's more. Astro's dish looked pretty <laughs> Yep, that's right. Christian went on to diss Ashley's dish. Man, don't bring her into this. But things further heated up when Joe stepped in and took charge of the situation. Can you imagine the tension in the air? But that's when Ramsey delivered a zinger at exactly the right moment. Well, we're trying to give you constructive criticism. If you were a man, you'd take it on the chin. Ooh, that's got a smart. You see, it's not just about attitude. It's about talent. Ramsey made it clear that while Christian might be a skilled cook, his attitude wasn't measuring up. Well, it's high time contestants understand that the judges expect them to serve food, not attitude. But this next episode from season five took a dramatic turn. And trust me, Ramsey's reaction to Dan and Cutter's dish is second to none. As Ramsey set his eyes on the plate, his response was immediate, strong, and obvious. What in the is that? I am so embarrassed. He was visibly taken aback, and let me tell you, you could almost see him fuming. Like, if I didn't know any better, I'd swear smoke was coming out of his ears. They had access to the usual amazing pantry that rivaled even the best restaurants. And yet, this plate's reality was far from that impressive stock. Ramsey's embarrassment was evident, and he demanded answers. And the answers he got amounted to nothing but finger pointing. He just starts grabbing and this is what you get. Ran out of time in the pantry, then I have nothing to work with. We went in there, I gave my idea, he gave his idea. We grabbed the proteins, and we started from there. Cutter blamed Dan, but there was more going on beneath the surface. Miscommunication was at its peak. As Dan suggested an idea, Cutter disliked. And this led to a whole new level of chaos. The thing is, Cutter felt their dish was decent enough, but Ramsey, you have to listen to this. But the most unexpected moment was yet to come. When Cutter told Joe not to taste the dish, he shut him down immediately. And that's when Joe did the unthinkable. <laughs> Do the honors. Yep, that's right. He actually brought a trash can on stage and ordered them to throw the food away. Wow, you know it's bad when not even Joe wants to do the honors of throwing it away. Now, this has to be one of the most dramatic moments in MasterChef history. And that's saying something for a show known for its drama. So that was a quick rundown of some of the wildest food fiascos ever featured on MasterChef. But if you can think of some more times that contestants screwed up on national TV for us all to see, make sure to drop them in the comments below. And hey, don't forget to join me on my channel's Discord server for free, where we can share even more crazy moments from the show. And guess what? I even have an exclusive server for those of you who are interested. Can't wait to see you there. But before you leave, make sure to smack that like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. Also, don't forget to check out my latest video right here. It's even crazier.